welcome to today's video. Um, we'd like to start with an apology um, because obviously we were doing these every day and then we told you that we dropped every other day and now it's been like a week. Um, I am really sorry about that but Luke's kind of back at work every week now and I have a uni deadline in three weeks that I really need to get cracking on so sadly real life has got back in the way of this again. <laughs> And the problem with the experimental era is that it's kind of up to the point where like, I haven't seen yeah. the next few films. Like, um, I, the Home in the Range that we're reviewing today, um, i never seen before. So I had to watch it, but it kind of got to the point where my one bit of free time a week would have been spent watching a Disney film for this. And... Yeah, so for the next, I think it's like three or four films now, we're having to watch the film and then review it. Um, which obviously, as Luke said, just trying to find time to sit down and watch the film is getting really difficult right now. But we're still going to uh, keep on churning them out. We, we are going to get to the end. We, we will get to the end. We just cannot promise you how regular they're going to be. But um, we'll try. So, um, Home on the Range. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, so it's a western. Um, I like honestly. I of all of the Disney's, this is the one I knew nothing about until the other day when I finally sat down to watch it. It's a western. Mm -hmm. Um, all of the ranches across um this whatever state it's set in. I don't. It doesn't really say. Yeah, it's, it's typical Wild West theme place. Um, frontier land we'll call it. Um, <laughs> hey, it's um, another link to the theme parks, y'all. Um. <laughs> All of the ranches have been bought up. Everyone's um, kind of poor because there's this uh, rambler um, who... A, a, a what? A rambler. He's not a rambler. What do you call him? He is a... He's not a rambler, but I can't remember what he's called the, now. A man that steals cows. Um, like, he comes in... A rustler. A rustler, that's the one, not a rambler. I guess he I rambles. I only know that because of Babe. Um, so he st he steals all the cows, puts all the farms out of business, and then uh, three cows um, yeah. decide that they are going to raise money and stop the problem at its root by kidnapping this evil man. Well, at... they're not kidnapping him, they're claiming him, they're basically, they become bounty hunters. Yeah, um, and the joke is, is that how can three cows take on a cowboy? Um, in the meantime, yeah. there is... Um, uh, the world's most famous bounty hunter who is called... Is it Rex? No, it begins with R. Um, it's like... I'm going to Google this. Sorry, we watched this like a week ago. Um, it's like... It's not Rango, but I want to say it's Rango, but it's not Rango. I got Rex on my tongue. I don't um, know why. Um, uh, there's a bounty hunter that um, wants to um, get the bounty. He's like the coolest guy in the world. There is a horse whose one goal in life is to... To, to work for that bounty hunter. Well, just to be Rico. involved is what he's called. What's his name? Rico. Rico. Um, he wants to um, just be involved in the action and like his dream is to be the horse of a cool cowboy, which is kind of quite fun, I think, that like the horse's ambitions are to be an adventurer too. Um, yeah. And then it kind of turns into like all of these three people trying to catch up with the bounty hunter. Alan Meterson. Yeah, um, and it's good fun. Um, Home in the Range is a good example of when I started the experimental era. I was like, this is the forgettable films, but that doesn't mean they're bad. Are they just yeah. forgotten because they've been forgotten? Because um, Home in the Range was a pleasant surprise. Yeah, I actually quite enjoyed this film. Like, again, I hadn't seen it um, before because this is kind of the era of Disney, like I've said previously, where I wasn't going to watch Disney films. When they originally came out, I was watching like... Um, I think this might have come out the same year as Shrek 2, so like that's what I was going to see. I was going to see like the DreamWorks and the Pixar films, not Disney. And then because the experimental era is kind of like blanketed as like, a, oh, don't, don't go there. I've never actually sat down to watch it before we did this. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah but um, it's, I quite like the character. Dame Judi Dench uh, plays yes. a cow. Mrs. Carraway. Yeah, like, I knew that voice, and I was trying to place it for ages. I just didn't think that I would ever find Dame Judi Dench in, like, a I bargain bucket Disney. I kept thinking it was, Disney. like, Helen Mirren or something like that. But, it was, like, a very quintessentially, like, British voice. And it's so obviously Dame Judi Dench, but I didn't ever think that I'd see Judi Dench in a Disney film of this calibre. I mean, so she I did didn't... Cats, so I don't think we can exactly say that she's above doing bad projects. Dame Judi. What did you do? <laughs> um... <laughs> Yeah, um, and all of these cows have distinct personalities. There's like the um, 
don't take no rubbish from anyone cow. Is that Maggie, the show cow? Yep, Maggie the show cow. You've got Dame Judy Dench, who is Dame Judy Dench. Like oh her. yeah, and like her thing is that she has a hat, doesn't she? She wears a hat and she like gets really ragey if anybody takes the hat away from her. Yeah, and then you've got the other cow that's just really nice. Uh, Grace, who is like your typical Southern Belle cow. Yeah, um, and they're, they're fun to spend out with and it's basically just these three cows roaming the desert together. Um, there's a bunch of fun sporting characters. There's like the rabbit who's lucky jack whose foot was stolen so he lost yeah, all his he luck lost in the process <laughs> so he just has a really unlucky time of it i like the horse i like the villain and he's got the three stupidest oh, like, identical the, the, triplet they're all called willy aren't they it's yeah. the three willies yeah <laughs> sorry <laughs> so, <I'm> so mature <laughs> um <laughs> Why am I here? Um, <laughs> I just thought it was okay to say it and I wasn't. Ah, <laughs> oh, Disney, what have you done to me? So Home on the Range is... I think Home on the Range's biggest problem is that it is happy to stop it. You're ruining <laughs> the whole video. This is why we don't do them for ages. Uh, um, Home on the Range's problem is it's happy to just be okay. And like yeah. I, I admire Disney for making a film that isn't trying to be the best. If anything, I think the problem with cinema these days is that every film is trying to be the best film. Like, um, and sometimes I miss the days of cinema where a film could just be entertaining to like. Like, I mean, if you look at Drake director DVD um, films, some of them are like would have been a classic in the yeah, 80s so, and 90s. So this, unlike most of the other films in the experimental era, which, um, like, we, I panned Brother Bear, the last review we did, Treasure Planet, I wasn't too hot on, like, Dinosaur and stuff like that. Luke wasn't a big fan of Atlantis. Um, they are not films that I would willingly sit down and re-watch if it was on telly mm -hmm. or just stick on in the background. But Home on the Range is. Like, if Home on the Range was on BBC this Christmas, I wouldn't be like, let's not watch that. The same way as I would if it was, like, Treasure Planet or something. Yeah, um, I admire that it's just want to, it just wants to be another film. But I think also all the other animation studios were absolutely nailing it. And well, I, this was the era of Shrek. Like, this came out the same year as Shrek too. Yeah, and I think um, Home on the Range just... Or wasn't trying to compete with Shrek. Um, I don't know what ready... Pixar this was this year. I'm just going to quickly look that up. Because I know Finding Nemo came out at the same time as Brother Bear. Yeah. Um, I imagine it'd be Incredibles, but don't quote me on it. Oh, uh, maybe. Which I didn't like, Incredibles. That's a whole different video. Again, euthanasia. Um, <laughs> see Sorry, I, I wasn't a one. fan of superheroes, guys. Um, but it was the Incredibles. Yeah, this literally came out the same. They came out the same exact same time. Yeah, Home on the Range came out a few weeks after. Home on the Range just wasn't ready for that kind of competition, and as such, it's kind of like just another animation. But it's enjoyable, is what is so weird. Like, and it did really badly. <laughs> Predominantly badly. Um, um, which I will get to in my. Fun fact with what happened with that. Um, I'm trying to see if I can find anywhere on here if it says just how badly it did. I don't think I can. But it, I think it was also the time of year that it came out. So this came out around Thanksgiving. Mm. And like I said, it came out three weeks after um, Incredibles had come out. Yeah. And then around Thanksgiving. So for people that aren't American that are watching this, it's in November. Mm. It's when the last week of November. It's just before you start getting all your Christmas films come out. Yeah. <laughs> one really morbid thing about um, Home and the Range is like one of like the themes, like kind of like the, the twist um, of um, this Disney film is that it's a farm, but all the animals kind of are like just as, like they help out. They're almost like labourers in the farm as well. Yeah. Which is really morbid when basically they're signing their own death sentence. They well, will be eaten. And this they pig's won't. like, well, I better help out. They won't, though, because the cows at least won't be eaten because it's a dairy farm. Mm. And nobody would eat Maggie because Maggie is a show cow, so... Yeah, but it's just a touch, like, I don't know. It's like all the chickens as well, uh, where it's uh, like, oh, they're all doing their little job, and it's just like, oh, dear. Yeah, like, I mean, it doesn't... It avoids that conversation that all of the characters would be... Um, Put on a chopping block yeah, soon. It's, it's not like other 
known farm films from our childhood, like Babe and Charlotte's Web, where the little piggies in that, it's very, very clear what of what is going to happen to them. Like Wilbur, mm. I think, in Charlotte's Web gets saved from the chopping block uh, and Babe gets saved from the chopping block as well because, you know, he's a sheep pig and he's great. Yay, Babe. Um, but you can tell I played Babe just before Christmas. <laughs> um, but basically, that that is a conversation that is had in those farm films and because the pig is good at another job, it doesn't get eaten. But Home on the Range just, like, glides over that. But I think that's why it went down so poorly, is, like, it doesn't ever want to have a proper discussion about anything. Yeah. Um, and it's just okay. Um, and that's all I really have to say about it. Yeah. Uh, shall we move on to some fun facts? Yeah, fun facts are good. So, my, my, well, we have at least, like, it's not a fun fact. It's amusing, but not fun. Um... So this movie was so poorly received by critics and audiences that art director Michael Giamo uh, was fired from Disney because of this. Ouch. I'd like to think that he'd already started the next film. <laughs> and they, they just like were like, well, if Home on the Range went down bad, Chicken Little's going to go down worse. Goodbye, Michael. Well, there you go. Um, I don't think he deserved to be fired for this film, though. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was more like a succession yeah, of films. Yeah, bad films. Um, my other fun fact is that this was originally going to... So this um, film went through many stages, as did um, every single film in the experimental era, it seems. It was originally going to be called Spitting Bullets, which I'm just trying to quickly pull up some more information about that, which I don't think I'm going to be able to find. Um, so that was the first one. It was going to be uh, done around a bull. Oh, Sweating Bullets, sorry. Yeah, so the working title was Sweating Bullets, and it was an early plot idea, it was about a calf named Bullets, who saved his herd from a band of ghost cattle, and rustlers called the Willies. So some of the... <laughs> Don't, we didn't even read it through that. Some of that bled into the final film. The Willies, at any rate. <laughs> they kept... They kept the Willies. <laughs> I never thought I'd be saying that about a Disney film, y'all. Um, then, then it was going to be about the Pied Piper, and um, the main character was going to be a, a deaf girl. Um, so it's basically going to be Pied Piper. But uh, Michael Eisner canned that because he didn't want uh, there to be dead children in the film, because apparently that wouldn't sell. But they kept the elements of the Pied Piper. So how Alameda Slim rustles the cows is that he yodels to them, mm -hmm. and they become hypnotised and grace the cow, who is completely tone deaf. Yeah doesn't get taken in by this and that is how essentially the day is saved yeah it's uh that's quite a good little twist yeah this is a clever film uh ratings i quite like this you know i'm probably gonna give it a six actually a six um because i'm looking at what i gave emperor's new groove and atlantis and stuff and i think i probably rate it on par with atlantis i'd like it a little bit more than emperor's new groove i would probably sit down and watch this again i don't know, i still i i liked it well enough and i can't think of no, I don't know. I can't. There isn't much good to say about it. There isn't much bad to say about it. I'm going to stick with a four. Oh, wait, really? Okay. Yeah. Um. I mean, I like it well enough. I think it's good, but... Yeah. Okay. Well, that's all for today, folks. Have a magical rest of your however long it's going to be before we see you next. <laughs> Ta-ra.